in the far northeast of Scotland. 44. 44. The UK's biggest fishing port is booming. 44. 44. 44. The fishing fleet from Peterhead has been landing record-breaking catches. Every day, men from this harbour town head out to sea to put fish on our plates. Arrgh. In one of Britain's most dangerous jobs. Got to watch everywhere you're standing. Got to look everywhere for waves coming aboard. Right, spawners, big spawners. But every trip's a gamble. Most fishing trips, it's a case of winging it. And if it fails, you learn by it. So will they return empty-handed? Or strike it lucky. Money, 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 money. What a crack at all. <laughs> Show me the money. In the far reaches of the North Sea, another Peterhead trawler, the Rosebloom is arriving at its hunting ground. Sandy McLemon has been skippering since he was 18. Earliest memory of fishing would probably be going to board my father's wooden boat, the Heather Bloom. And I think I was maybe nine at the time. I just enjoy it, fell in love with it, I suppose, and didn't want to do anything else. The Rose Bloom is a pear trawler dragging a larger net strung between two boats. You have two boats, uh, two crews, you know, everybody's kind of depending on you to make the, the right decisions, you know, get this boat to the right place, get some fish on them, you know, get me back home quick, safely. Sandy and two of his brothers take turns skippering the Rosebloom and its sister ship, the boy John. She can get a jump to you there about. Johnny is the youngest of the three skippers. Oldest brother, Sandy, kind of runs the business. I'm not going to say we don't get annoyed with each other. Or maybe I won't always do what I'm supposed to be doing, but uh, hopefully most of the time I am, you know. For this trip, Sandy has steamed more than 200 miles into Norwegian waters, searching for high-value fish. Norwegian sector here, where we are, would look for some heat. But whether they're here or not here, we don't know yet. You never know where they're going to turn up. You know, when you're standing in the wheelhouse and you're heaving the net back up, there's this great anticipation, you know, have you caught something, have you not? And the, when the net comes to the surface... ..with a good haul of fish in it, that is a major high. You know, if they could bottle that feeling and sell it, it would just be top seller. It just, for a fisherman, that's as good as it gets. Nice size of hake, good big fish, so a lot of the top restaurants in London now hake high up there on the menu, so good quality hake demands good prices. It may be a good first haul, but the two trawlers have burnt thousands of pounds of fuel getting here. They've a long way to go before they start making money. It's like throwing a dice. That's it. The game's started, and you, you just don't have a lot of time to try to make the wrong moves. Today, there's no sun in the sky, so yesterday, we were blinded with sun. I'm driving manually just because I'm trying to keep an eye on uh, the boy John here. We're not sure yet if that's the right boat or not. You kind of see the point of your nose today, can you? The sea is uh, something that you have to have an awful lot of respect for all the time. You're watching the weather all the time, just waiting for it to change. It just is a dangerous place, you know, there's no, there's no getting away from it. In December 1994, Sandy saw firsthand how tragedy can strike at sea. 
me and my brother Donald were both on board at the time with my, with my father and uh, three other crewmen. The weather wasn't very nice that day and the, the waves just oh, I swamped the vessel uh, from the stern and the vessel sunk away very quickly before we really realised it was happening. We went for the life rafts and uh, we all got in the life rafts, but my, my father didn't manage to get in the life raft and he was lost, he was never ever found, so... It just shows you how fast and, and horrible something can change, you know? has been interrupted by unexpected visitors. I've just been shouted that we're going to wait to get a boarding by the Norwegian Coast Guard. Routine inspection, check the net, check the catch. There's a few folk you'd like to see when you just get out of your bed, but the Norwegian Coast Guard's not just very high on the list, I'm afraid. Morning. Hello. It's always very nerve-wracking because they don't muck about the Norwegians. You've got to be 100% right. You know, these are the fish police. No hake. Because of the sea? No, because of the, all the fog. The hake wants the sunshine. Okay. Dave, if you take him down to the, take him down to the, the, the belt and just go through every him we am. How many kilos in each box? British boats are allowed to fish in Norwegian waters but there are strict rules about the number and size of fish they can land. They could take you to Norway, arrest your boat, eh, arrest your catch, eh, arrest, the, arrest the skipper. You don't want to be on the wrong side of them, you know, that's severe criminal offence in their eyes. And they'll check the catch for undersized fish. They'll count a hundred fish, and if they get more than 10% undersized, then, well, that's a, you're in trouble then, you know. It's never the intention to get it wrong because the consequences are so high. All uh, two boxes high, I think. On each side? Aye, on each side, aye. You have to keep your eye on them. Yeah, all agreed. Right, that's fine. Thank you. So now we're finished. Now we're <laughs> finished. Deal. After three hours, the Norwegian fish police are satisfied things are in order. That's always a relief now when you see that boat go and everything's OK. Back to the job in hand. Where's the hake? <laughs> On shore, Jason Jack is conducting his own factory floor inspection of the family's fish processing business. Thank you, see you, Harpy. It's a very skilled job, really skilled. So depending on how fast they've got and how nice their fillets are, the more they get paid. See, nice. That's fresh. Oh, they're still alive, look. Morning, Kenny. Jason bought around £35,000 worth of fish at this morning's market in Peterhead. This is some coal that I bought in the market this morning. It's a bit bigger ones. Some nice big ones for you girls. Beautiful and red. So the brighter red, the fresher they are. Inside the body, no blood spots. Nice and white, nice and white. Now a workforce of nearly 60 need to fillet and pack the fish ready to be transported across the UK and Europe. I think some of the biggest pressures that I face is definitely in the market in the morning. Pressure, oh, my dad needing fish, getting fish at the right price for our customers, trying to get everything done in time, trying to reorganise my staff. 
It's 10 times easier to move than it is with pushing it. Okay. Pulling it's much better. Pulling it's much better. Maybe tell him he's pushing it. Much easier to pull it, alright? That's up, guys. It's his first day. On the rose bloom, Skipper Sandy is wrestling with a problem. After a great start, the fish have dried up. Really frustrated yesterday because it was a bright day of fog, so we didn't think we got the best chance for the hake. And fish have tails, they move on, they swim, they shift. Yeah, he's just shifting about trying to find the haddock and frog. I know he will find them eventually. You don't want to start off quick and then slow down and drag it out so that you know, a good lot of your catch that you got on the first day ends up old fish, you know. The day one fish, you know, the clock's ticking with them, you know. Fish is a perishable good. So I'm wondering if we're gonna, uh, if we're gonna half land this. Sandy's making plans to return to port early, only partially full, then go straight back out again. It means longer at sea for the crew. Nobody likes half landing. You know that's never fun because you know, gee, wish we've got to go again. And it'll be mixed emotions, I would say, with the boys. So you okay with going in for a half trip then? <clears throat> well, I did have something on at the weekend, but uh, such is life. Our job is to catch them, but when we take them to the market, we've no control over what price we get. You know, we just have to accept the price that people give us. And that is just the decision process of, am I making the right move? Is this the right thing to do? Why don't you tell me the quantities? At Jack's fish processing factory, Jason's running out of time. One second. Trying to get today's supplies onto the road to their customers. Our actual first order to England's at like half ten, then our zine at like half eleven, then our big lorry leaves at one, two. We've got a good reputation. That's why we've got to make sure that things go right all the time, because it can take a lifetime building up a good reputation. It only can take two, one or two bad sendings and you can ruin it all. These ones are gonna go to France. That's a prawn tails. I like soprans then. Bonnie? Derek's 25 years he's been working here, all other than me. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is wasted in search of profit. This guy's doing something totally different. He's taking a tongue out of the fish. The tongue here. Yeah. This is hake tongues to get silk to France. Delicacy. So once we've cut a tail off, we then do the cheeks of the monk. The cheeks go to France and Italy. It's a delicacy, aye. Right now, we're at about the closing stages. We're just about finished. We've got maybe five or six boxes of squid to pack and a couple of months to go through a grading machine, and that'll be us finishing the day. As 2 p.m. arrives, the final shipment leaves the factory. Tomorrow, these fish will be on sale all over the UK and Europe. I've got a, a bounce in my step, if you can notice. It's 1.30 a.m. and the Rose Bloom and Boy John are arriving back into Peterhead, only half full. We made the decision last night to land our heat, keep them fresh. The guys are sure at the market, they're thinking the sooner we get this in, the better. The proof will be in the pudding now. It's not what you catch, it's what you get paid for that counts. Did you make it safely home, my boy? One thirty-seven, Johnny! Most of the fishing fleet are out at sea. Sail seems to be going well so far. I fish is expensive. Fish is good. Hey, next side! One three two three. A scarcity of fish is playing into Sandy's hands. Well, the half landing was definitely the right decision. There was no other hake in the market. A few hours later, and they're off to sea again. 
see them putting the last of the stores aboard there, so it's, uh, it's time to get going again, I suppose, and then get home to see the wife and kids for a while. Next time, on the Zenith, the fishing gear hits breaking point. And so does the young skipper's patience. The stress gets the air a lot. And can broom handles and sticky tape help the crew work out what's wrong with the Amity? Never had this before. Crazy.